streaming live on Facebook. You got me mid sandwich chewing. Mid sandwich chewing. What's up, everybody? Nick Baldwin here with Lab Goat Agents. I got James Wong. If you guys don't know James, James is like one of the one of the biggest visionaries that myself and Tristan have come across when it comes to branding real estate agents and branding real estate companies in general. Um, James also helped Tristan and I create LCAMarketingCenter.com. If you haven't checked that out, definitely go check it out. He's a CEO and founder of Maxa Designs. And James also has developed branding for huge companies uh, for uh, Tony Horton Fitness. Uh, he does, um, the you know, for Panda Express, Giorgio Beverly Hills, Fredericks of Hollywood, um, and a, about 175 other business leaders and creative entrepreneurs. And he's not even 30 years old yet. So what that tells me is, I need to pick up the pace. That's basically what that tells me. I need to, uh, I need to, I need to get off the couch and stop binging Netflix. Um, so James, thank you so much for being here. We're going to talk about agent branding, what agents are doing wrong, why agents typically suck at branding themselves, and how we can work on improving that. What do you think, James? Is that a good topic? Yeah. And as you were even saying that, I started thinking about other things I would want to say. Um, Especially, you know, my whole history and my whole career has been in real estate marketing and branding. So like, like I got in it and never left. It's just been, that's been my whole uh, career. And then as I've continued to do real estate marketing and branding, you know, we've picked, we've started to work outside of the industry and work with other um, industries, other big brands and learned how they did it and started to take a lot of the big brand mentality with big budgets and how they ran brand development and found a way to do it in a more simpler and easier way for agents and brokerages. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I love that. Like the stuff, sorry, I'm, I'm just, I'm sharing this into, into the group and getting people to start watching us. I love how your designs are so clean and simple and sophisticated. And I think a lot of the times agents don't think of themselves as marketers and they just kind of, they kind of do too much, right, with their brand because less is more. You know, it's got to be sleek. You know, the average home buyer these days is 32 years old. They're millennials. You know, they like to see brands and logos that they can kind of identify with. Um, so, so let's talk about let's talk about where you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say just to add to that. You know, you, the millennials that are 32, you know, they have 180 billion dollars of buying power and they're also bombarded with tons of media. So, you know, they're on, they're the ones on Instagram and Facebook. They're the ones who see an ad every other, every other post or between their friends, they're seeing ads. The ads that they're seeing are super high production and some of them, um, and very creative. And so yeah. you, you have to think like, we don't have to compete at that level because these brands have million dollar budgets, but you do have to be very thoughtful and creative in how you approach the way you market yourself online because now the bar has raised. So, you know, I, I'm watching, you know, I'm currently in Miami. I'm with uh, the Sotheby's affiliates network right now doing some um, consulting and uh, announcing some new things. And, you know, I'm watching them step up their game like crazy because compass has come in and they're stepping up their game and yeah. uh, every other KW has stepped up their game. I'm watching everyone step up their media game because the first thing to know about branding that you may not be thinking about is if, if you're, if you consider yourself a business owner and you're running your own business, you have a part-time job as a media business as well. Um, I totally agree. Think about it. You're in the, you're in the business of producing media um, to be successful and reach this new generation of people. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's where a lot of agents fall short. You know, I think that they're, they're, they're losing sight of that. Um, because like I said, we're not just realtors, we're marketers, and you are your own brand. And so you need to be identifiable. Let's talk about tell me about some of the things that, in your opinion, agents are, are doing wrong. Yeah, right when it comes to their branding, what are they not doing right? Well, the first thing I'll say is, we needed to first define the difference between brands and branding. Oh, that's a good point. You're right. You don't realize that your 
like a lot of agents I meet, you know, I've worked with hundreds now. I mean, they think, oh, I just need to make a brand. So I need a logo. I need a website. I need some business cards. I need some nice open house signs. And then I'm done. And what they don't realize is you, you, you have a brand, but you need to continuously be in branding. So you need to be branding yourself all the time in every action, every touchstone, every milestone that you have, any touch that you have with your community or your target um, market, it needs to be, you need to continue to brand yourself. And so I look at it like the first mistake is to think you're ever done. You're never done with brand, with your brand. You're continuously developing it. Just like the lab code agents brand, it's continuing being developed in its new podcast that you guys have. You're, you're building a brand if, with your email newsletters, your content online, your webinars, it's, it's just continuing developed, but it's being developed around these core, this core attributes that make a brand differentiate itself than another brand. So to give you an example, what there, if I, the last time I did a search on Zillow for agents in Southern California, Los Angeles area, I found 13,000 agents uh, to choose from. Yeah, and, who's your pick, right? Yeah, functionally, we all kind of do the same thing. You know, we move people from A to B and we help with the, we help with um, transactions around your home, the homes and finding dream homes. Um, but what we don't realize is if we all do the same thing, how do we differentiate ourselves? Uh, and you have to break it down into three main attributes. And the three are your functional, your, your emotional, and your social attributes. So your functional is what you do functionally. Now, if you, want, if you, if you pay attention, people are, agents are branding themselves differently. The successful top producers are branding themselves differently, even though they do the same thing. Some agents yeah. focus on, you know, marketing, like they just kill it at listing homes and they, or they do really good luxury marketing, or maybe they do really great developments and they are great at um, marketing developments, or maybe they're the, the perfect couple mom and pop, shop that works with families and generations of within one family like they you you kind of have to just pick a few things functionally that you do that's very different um or that you just that you go back to over and over again and then you have your emotional attribute which is emotionally how do you want your, people to feel about your brand are you the cutting edge very cool very um slick luxury agency or are you the tech forward, very like, you know, you know, streamlined tech savvy approach that like everything you do is um, very, very clean and modern. Or is it the, you know, we're a family business. Every, uh, you know, we, we treat you like family. We will, we'll, we have all the time in the world for you and we're going to be there by your side and your kid's side and your grandkid's side. Like what is that emotional attribute that they're going to have? And then lastly is socially, what is that social attribute? So are you with, how do you support your community? What are people saying about you? And I can go into further detail. Like I'll give you guys some examples of brands that I found that have done a great job in real estate and outside of real estate. I'll yeah. show you some examples. That's awesome. So I love that, you know, you have to find who you are uh, as a person and as a business. Um, and kind of like, that's essentially what you're saying, you know, figure out who you are, why you do what you do, the type of business you want to run, right? It's not just like, Hey, he make me a logo. He make right. me a website. Right. Yeah. Your brand is like all encompassing. So you're talking about lab coats, education, media, you know, events, um, and exploring the science of real estate, which is our tag phrase, tagline. Um, and so we're, we're developing a brand around that. And like you said, we're always, moving our brand forward. You know, we're never, we're never staying stagnant. Um, no, that's a great point. So the difference between a brand and the difference between, a, and there's a difference between brand and branding. A lot of agents don't, don't think that way. Um, let's talk about, yeah, I want to talk about some branding. Uh, I want to talk about, I love talking about bra bad branding, right? I love it. Like I love talking about like just horrible, difficult to look at, right? Give me some examples of where you oh, think man. agents are going wrong. Don't, you don't have to call people out specifically, but what are agents not understanding about how to build this up? 
Well, it's not, it's so hard to, to give an example. Like as soon as you said bad branding, I thought of like my own personal clients, you know, that. Right. Well, I don't want you to, yeah, don't call it. Well, you know, Tim's got, that. Tim's got the worst brand. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because they'll have a bad brand. It's like a, it's like a makeover, right? Like someone right. does you come in, you got a, a house that needs to be restored and completely renovated. You take it, you spend time on it. And then when you, when you're done, people walk in and they're like, wow, this is an incredible brand and, or this is an incredible home. And going back to the idea and, and this is a new idea that I started to really think about, which is brands versus branding is if you're continuously developing your, if you're branding yourself all the time, then you really don't have to worry about the because the what, where, where where bad brands happen is when you stop updating your content or stop updating your uh, your website or any of those things it, or your newsletters they start to look really old because you never updated since two thousand two uh, <laughs> you've been doing the same thing over and over right. again that's the time where if you're constantly branding you never have to worry about it um, at towards the end of this section I'll kind of give them everyone an idea of what you should be branding. Um, okay. Because I think that'll be helpful. Um, and what I think people always ask, like, what's the, what's like, how do you get started? Like, what's the first thing you do? And Nick, you, you called on it, right? You got to figure out who you are and, and what you're doing, but you can break it down even easier. Kind of like a, a, like a plan, which is, like I said, your functional, your emotional and your social attributes. I'm actually going to play a video. Okay, for, sweet. And it's a video we shot for a couple that's, a, it's, they're with KW. They're like top 50 in the nation of all the KW associates. They kill it here in LA. And I really love this video because you'll, I'll, I'll stop it at times to show you different areas where they're actually taking the time to brand themselves. Mm -hmm. they're, and but how they're doing it when they, which where they get started is of course through the, how like the words. The, the story that they chose, the messaging that they chose, and they lean hard on it. So like find your messaging, whether you're strong at marketing or you're family focused or you're all about new developments or whatever it is that you're going to do. You got to, when you find it, you lean in and you'll see how they built a, a really incredible brand. And I'll, and I'll pause it a couple of times and show you guys. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So this is Jerry and Rachel. Um, very sweet couple. They've been in real estate for a while now and hopefully it doesn't lag too much and Nick, just let me know and I'll, yeah, you know. I'll try to keep it going. It's that happy connected feeling you have for your neighborhood and the home that you live in. It's all about hometown love. So I'll pause it right there. Like you can instantly tell the emotional attribute they're building around their brand. Hometown love, okay? So that's like their, that's their brand that they started with. Love that's it. What we want everyone to experience. Rachel and I feel this way about LA. I was born in Santa Monica and I've always thought of LA as home. While we both have strong ties to LA, we also have deep Southern roots. For us, treating strangers like family and being individuals of our word is just a way of life. We do what we say and we say what we do. So they kick off, that's their big functional attribute. So functionally, part of their brand is we do what we say and we say what we do. And that's how, that's how they're starting to differentiate, differentiate themselves compared to every other agent. Even though we're all doing the same thing, this is how they decided that they were gonna do it a little bit differently. We're known as specialists in the Miracle Mile and Pico area and experts in Los Angeles real estate. More functional branding, right? They pick the neighborhood. They pick the yeah. area they're experts in. Again, more differentiation. We make it our life's work to know our neighborhoods, not just where it is now, but where it has been and where it's going. The amount of positive feedback I get about them is incredible. They are always in the top 5% of all teams for Keller Williams. And last quarter, they were actually number 38 in the United States. Wow. I've had the pleasure of working with Jerry and Rachel on three separate occasions, twice as a buyer and once as a seller. As a buyer, there was never an ounce of pressure to get any deal done. My needs were always paramount. Sometimes in our industry, there had been this get the deal done quick mentality. 
And when Rachel and I started our business, that was one thing that we absolutely knew that we wanted to do different. We so I wanted to stop there. So now they're building on their social validity. How do they do it? Through a testimonial, right? Social validity, social attributes saying, here's another person. Here's what they're saying about us. My needs were paramount. That's something to really build on. Like to use the word paramount is, is again, they're doing a great job at saying who we are using um, and socially who we are. We want our clients to feel 100% cared for. We want them to feel like they have an agent for life. The level of service I got from Jerry and Rachel is incredible. Almost spoils you for any other future transaction that you might have. Think of us as your full service real estate consultants. We have the knowledge and experience to advise on real estate sales, design, and home staging. So whether you're selling or remodeling your home, we work with you on the best ways to get the highest and best value. Rachel and I are about creating hometown love. And we're so excited to share our knowledge and expertise. We look forward to the opportunity to serve your real estate needs soon. So, so before you say anything, I just want to, uh, let's stop sharing your screen for a second. We go back um, to, okay, cool. Yeah. I, I love that. And I'll tell you like the things that I picked up, right? Like as someone who is not an expert on branding, like you, the things that I picked up from that, right there, they, they showed a real human aspect to themselves. They talked about um, who they are, you know, where they came from you know, their husband and wife, they showed um, uh, that they love where they live, which is really important. Uh, and, then it, and then it eased into what agents and brokers in their market center are saying about them, Cl what clients are saying about them. So you have social proof. Then it went into produ proof for production. Which, so it was so much encompassing in just like a two minute video, you know? And I would totally call those people. Right. I thought it was great. They got three listings from when they launched that video. Um, wow, okay. Oh, so cool. And you know what? I think the big, one of the biggest questions is like, why do top producers get more listings than other, other agents? And like the simplest answer is, homeowners don't know who you are. They don't know who you are. And we're not, and that a top producer, everyone I've met, cause most of the ones that I, I, most of our clients are top producers cause they're the ones who like see the value in, in us. And what they say is like, they're continuing, continuing to brand themselves because they, you can never get a better job at having more and more of the, your community know who you are. And then, and then find a way to have them want to work with you. And I, I think that video is a great example of hitting your, your functional attributes, your emotional hometown love, and then your social attributes. And then once they get all that, that's like the framework to know who you are. Once they know you, it's pretty easy to, to remember who you are. Yeah, I mean, it's just like any brand, you know, it's just like Nike or, you know, or McDonald's. I mean, right. you know, you just remember it. You, you know that the product, uh, well, McDonald's is hit or miss. But, well, at least with McDonald's, it's consistent. Whether it's consistently good or bad, it doesn't matter. At least it's consistent. But with Nike, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a diehard Nike fan. I, I wear nothing but Nike shoes. And so it's really, uh, it's really, it's all the same across the board. So I'll give you an example, right? <clears throat> One of the agents in my, in, my, in my market, he's actually the top agent in our entire state of Michigan. His name's Jeff Glover. And his billboards, right? Check this out. James, I'm going to send you a text of what it looks like. It'll blow your mind. It says, it says eight, five, like it's phone number, eight, five, five. And then a picture of him like this in the middle and then sells eight, five, five, his face sells. And you want to know why people know his name by looking at his face. 
They know that says 855. Oh, that's Jeff. Sells. And they did crowdsourcing to find out like how recognizable his face was. That's how you know you branded yourself. And that's how you know people know you. And that's why he's number one. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. You know, I think all the agents, you know, if you go on a Sunday, you start to see a lot of the same signs, a lot of the same bus benches, and they're continuing to brand themselves. And you, one thing to consider is branding is, gosh, it's all about creativity. It has nothing to do with your budget. So you don't, branding is about making a, a, a projecting a promise, right? Your brand is a promise of some, some level of standard that you've created for yourself. And the thing to remember is whatever you create as your brand is up to you. Like you can just, you can just say, we focus on families. I decided I focus on top producers and, you know, yeah. I, you know in brokerages. I, I didn't, um, that's just, you just get to decide and then you have to validate yourself and of course do a great job and deliver on your brand promise. Yeah. So, I mean, we talk all the time in real estate about, you know, what I, one of my favorite phrases is um, be one place a lot, not everywhere a little, right? So in real estate, it's so important to, like, to have a niche, right? Whether that niche is expireds or FISBOs or first-time buyers or downsizers or newlyweds or whatever you want it to be, right? Like they picked the, their niche, even though it might seem broad, it really isn't. They actually, in that video – talked about where they focus on the neighborhood they love and where they live in, you know? And so, um, you have to really hone in on, 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 on the type of people you want to work with. And then that will help you in facilitating your brand as well and making that so much more clear. Cause if you're not clear on your brand, the consumer is definitely not clear on your brand. Yeah. And then one thing to remember is, you know, we're t on average, an, an average agent and isn't born a designer or a marketing creative a director or something like that. Um, but you, you do want to think like a marketer as a real estate, as a, like for your profession, you want to think like a marketer and then make sure you have a one person that you can work with that can help you build that brand around you. And every year you'll watch your brand develop and it gets better and better. And, you know, Equinox wasn't as edgy and luxury as a brand 20, uh, 17 years ago, you know, it, you guys, it, the brand continues to evolve and it gets cleaner and better. Um, but the first thing to do is find your, find your feeling. What's that feeling you're going for? Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick, show you another great example yeah, go for of, it. of a couple other, uh, clients that I think have yeah, done a great good stuff. Uh, this is just a great way to see, um, creativity that didn't cost that much. Right. So the first thing, this is Deirdre and Terry, again, another KW producing uh, team, and they called themselves the L34 group. And the L34 group is the latitude, L34 is the latitude of Los Angeles. You know what? I think you, I think you might have shown me this one before, which is pretty sweet, but I like this story. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty cool because they, they say they're with the community. If you go to their website, it's very, it's, it's very homey, but look at this headshot for a second. That's one thing that I think agents are learning more and more about, about how important your headshot is. But this headshot is, Nick, would you, what did you say this, this shows about this, this married couple that sells real estate? Like, what do you see when you, when you see this photo? I see, uh, I see, um, I see authenticity. I feel like they're authentic people. Um, I feel like I can trust them just by looking at this photo. Um, they look like they love what they do. Um, you know, yeah. those are some things that kind of come to mind right off the bat. Those are great. So you, you, you can trust them. They look like they love what they do, that they care, that they're in love. People love yeah. a love story. So they People love love, James. They love love. Yeah, I know. And so they took that and really ran with it. You know, um, they top of one of the one of the top producers of their office, but let's let's see how they wrote their content for a second and how oh, they somebody, somebody commented and said uh, that they look approachable. That's huge, yeah. huge. huge. Dana Faircloth, thank you. That's a great. That's actually a great word to use for that. 
a lot of their business is all calls. People call them because they send mailers. All of their business is mainly mailers, but their mailers tell a story of who they are. One, L34, it's the latitude of where you'll find us. Their photo tells a story. It's a thousand words, but then read this content. They said, just listed. This is not a home, house, dwell, abode, or pad. This is a sanctuary, a space where people gather around the cozy fireplace in winter, some stealing first kisses, sumptuous meals prepared with love in an ample kitchen, wishes buried on the grand oak in the back, laughter heard around the fire pit in the springtime, and plans for a future drawn in the detached designer studio. You, you, you can tell that they are what exactly their brand. They're authentic, like you said, like what they're saying about how they market this property is who they want to be. It's, I don't, I don't know, it's, I hope you guys can see an example of how yeah, well. see it. I love like the, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really, the description itself, you know, even if I didn't see the photos of that house and I read that description, I'd be like, I got to see this house. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, they're the ones doing the marketing. And so it's, it's very cool to, to see how different agents, every, like I said, everything you touch, you're either branding yourself or you're not. And when they touch descriptions for their for their um, for their mailers, they're branding themselves as long, uh, along with the property, and how they do their headshots, how they do their website, their logo, everything about that is part of how you continue to brand yourself. And I think the more we talk about it, the easier it gets. I'll show you another a great example. Yeah, let's see. Um, you know, ways to do it. I just want, I have some things that are pretty cool. This is way off the spectrum, but I just love it. Um, so this is an example of Chipotle, right? This is branding 101. Chipotle is a burrito, you know, chain and they sell food. Functionally, all they do is offer me like, you know, Mexican food or burritos. But what do they say? They said, it's not just a burrito. It's a foil wrapped, handcrafted, local farm supporting, food culture changing cylinder of deliciousness. That to me is being creative and it doesn't take a budget to be creative. It's just, we don't, you don't just sell real estate. What else do you do? You guys don't just offer burritos. Yeah. They, they're handcrafted. They support local farms. They're all about food culture and they are cylinder, a cylinder of deliciousness. And I just thought that was a great example of how you build a story around yourself. And I love how they have, it's a foil wrapped. They even put the foil in there because that's kind of, I mean, that's part of their branding is the foil. Oh, right. Exactly. You right. know? Um, of course, Disneyland, right? When you think of Disneyland, you've got the happiest place on earth. Yeah. There, there's a thing in branding called your organizational purpose. Okay. So, um, big brands are doing it. I, I just saw um, like a South Beast yesterday do it and I'm watching different brands do it and it's like, they say, what is our organizational purpose? And Disneyland's is, is the happiest place on earth. And everyone works under that one promise, that one big promise and purpose. And the question is, what is your purpose? Yeah. You know, honestly, it's supposed to take a day of thinking to figure out the real purpose and then to really edit it so that it's perfectly refined so that you can then say it to anyone and put it on everything. And so to find that purpose and that brand promise, which are very linked, they're very close. Like you have your personal purpose and then you have the brand's promise. Um, it, you want to make sure it hits functional, emotional, and social. Going functional, back to emotional and social, got it. Functional, it's a place. It's a theme park. Okay. Emotional, the happiest place on earth. Third, socially, everyone can say that. Everyone can be a part of that. And it's something that brings people together, I think. And then how do you improve on that? So we'll go into functionally, how do you improve a theme park? You create fast passes, right? You make, yeah. you make walking around just as fun as being on a ride. Emotionally, you build, you, you make characters come to life. Uh, you, you have fireworks. You have moments you know just lots of places to take pictures to have memories socially you bring your friends your family there's it's 
they're building on these three assets again. I, and I'll, I'll keep diving deeper as we go in. Uh, another one, this is really great. Another great example of good copy. This is a, a company called Extraordinary Living and they're a real estate bro uh, brand called Extraordinary. And here's what they wrote about their content. They said, we're all under one roof to make yours extraordinary. Again, building on the name, Extraordinary Living. And then they said, we're all under one roof to make yours extraordinary. We're forward thinking, we are forward thinking, breaking type paragraph paradigms, elevating old beliefs and expanding wealth. We complement our big visions with experts in each field that can see them through. And you'll see as you go to check out their site, I'll pull it up. They have their three different divisions. Well, I love their logo, first of all. That's freaking cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Because sometimes I don't like when agents use houses, but if you use it creatively, it can really work. Yeah. Yeah, we, this is one of our projects like four years ago. Oh, it look, it's good. That's pretty cool. So yeah. one of the things you'll see as they continue to define their brand is they said extort, they said we're real estate, we're design, and we're investments. Again, further developing their value proposition, their brand promise, and being extraordinary. So when you shift your real estate, you shift your world. We design spaces for elevated living to elevate your living. And then we see value where others don't. We create value where others can't. And again, you'll notice... I, we're, we're spending a lot of time on how to develop your brand from the beginning, the foundation, which is your story, your brand promise, uh, your organizational purpose. Now, it, now we're looking at functional, emotional, and social attributes about your brand. And then we can take it further into, this is a page that I might have shown you before, Nick. It's like a resource that we created a long time ago um, called the branding map. Yeah. And, find it on our site at maxadesigns.com and it kind of goes into a little step of the visual side of how do you build that brand. And on the visual side, the first thing you have is you have a name. You, you come up with name, whether it's your name, your family's name, or, you know, you come up with elevate or aspire, or this one's TLC for transitions, living and connections mm -hmm. or tender love and care, which is, yeah. you know, very some next LA, you got space, all kinds of fun brands. And once you have a name, you would de develop that logo. Are those, are those brokerages? Nope. These are all agents or teams. Oh, okay. Yeah. These are all agents or teams. And it, these are just a small example of like some things that are pretty yeah, cool. Um, but once you pick, so at this point, once you've developed your message, you've developed who it's for, you then start to think about, well, what kind of style am I going for that would cater to the type of person you're going for? So if you're going for, you know, strong, independent, successful women, and you're going for that market because you're one and you want to work with those mm -hmm. type of clients, you would build a brand for that type of person, right? right? Versus if you're going for families or if you're going for real estate, you know, it just kind of depends on the type of design you're going for. It all kind of changes. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a really cool brand, actually. I really like that. So the first thing to do is once you have a, a particular style that you've picked, there's three ways you can brand yourself, right? You can always, you, there's colors that you can use to brand yourself that, are, that you co-brand with your brokerage. There, and it's also, it can be a color palette of colors. There's patterns that you can use. So like, you know how like Compass has the dots and stuff like that? Right. Um, or... I'm just trying to think of another brand that uses different patterns. You know, Vimeo has their, uh, has their gradient rainbow. Mm -hmm. or Google has their, you know, they're a diverse brand. But once you have that, so you have your colors, you have your patterns, and then you have imagery that can help brand you. Visually, it can help you brand. So we chose for Rory, you know, she swims in the ocean a lot. And that's part of her story. It's like, oh, okay. He loves to swim in the ocean. So we picked oceans as a branding piece of her brand. And if you look at her, if you look at her site, you look at her business cards, you look at every, you know, her being in the water, it's all built around this. Like she loves oceans and she also sells on the West side of LA where she sells in Redondo and Huntington and Manhattan and all the beach communities. And so it'll just keep going in into, this is her listing presentation. And more swimming, more ocean feeling. It's just, um, it's very, it's one particular style. 
And then you've got like people who like to sell in the city, right? Or commercial real estate associates or, or very high end, you know, Amon, they do estates only pretty much. And they just have, uh, they build their brand around images of estates. Great example. Um, okay. They're very clear on, on, on who they are, type of clientele they want to attract. You know, they're very clear on that. That's what it looks like. Right. So you position your message and then you go into that design of visual identity. So an identity is like, you're, it's like Disneyland has an identity. Starbucks has an identity versus um, Coffee Bean or Pete's Coffee. So everyone has their own identity. And anything that is produced by you or your company should, ha- should be a part of the identity that you've already developed. So if it's not like this, these are great examples. If you can see my screen, yeah. of how your flyers, your brochures, your, your listing packets, your marketing strategy decks, anything that's touched by your company or your brand, it should be already branded by your, um, you know, by you. And then it should include some of the messaging. But the, the, the reason why you want to develop this cohesive brand and not have it all over the place is because people then can start to recognize you and it, you, you start to build the, your memory. You know, remember what Gary Keller said? I think he said, like, what, 91% of home sellers work with the first or second agent they think of. It's, this is part of branding and what we forget is, and this is the one to like underline, is your brand is an asset and or it could be a liability but the goal is to develop your brand into into an asset so that it's not going to say if i spend this much money i'm going to get this much in return it's this is the building brand recognition and so that you, everyone's aware that this brand's here and they're so yes, they're available Go ahead. so yesterday i interviewed an agent with keller williams named tara carter and she's in south florida and her and on her branding uh, part of her logo is a flamingo, and Tara's business is based 100% on referrals and sphere of influence. She never buys a single lead. She did 20 million in volume last year, strictly referrals and sphere of influence. And uh, you know, part of it is because her logo and the branding she's created for herself is so recognizable and so memorable. Uh, that, you know, it's just bringing organic business to her. And that's essentially, you know, where we all would like to be. I'll give you another example. So my mom's been in the business for 25 years. You know, she, she and last year her team did um, 43 million in volume in northern New Jersey. And that's because she's built up a brand for herself, you know, um, and she's memorable and like, like you were showing the example of um, L34, you know, my mother never has to pick up the phone. I mean, it's, it's the brand is so memorable now that they think of real estate, they think of her, you know? It's crazy. I, what is, do you know the statistic for what your business should be in referrals out of all your business for the year? I, th- I heard it was 33%. That, um, I'm not sure, but that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I guess they, as you get bigger, you know, the ratio gets higher. But, you know, if you're not get willing to spend on ap- paid advertising to drive leads to your, you know, to a way to capture them and then convert them, and you're not building a system around that, and you want to build a system around literally just referral business and continuing to uh, drive more business from referrals, then – having a brand just accelerates that process because just for someone to remember your name and your headshot is not enough because remember we're competing against every other brand and business that's trying to compete for that person's attention on Instagram, on Facebook, on TV, on any blog channel. And so your content, the better you get at building a brand is, is going to have a better chance of being remembered. For sure. For sure. Hey, somebody had actually a really good question. Laura, Gam- Gamal, I believe. She's saying she's curious how you would brand yourself if you were with two different companies in two different states. Um, a good question. I mean, I know that some brokerages are a little bit more lenient than others when it comes to personal branding, but I don't see a problem with using the same logo. I mean, what do you think? 
I would do the same. I would, I wouldn't change, you know, you, you think about it like, it's just like an expansion of yourself. Uh, right. you don't, you, I wouldn't change the way you branded yourself. You, if you're going to stick to these value propositions, stick to this promise, stick to the story, your same headshot and just change out that broker logo. You know, that's yeah. about as much I, as I would do. Now if they have like very strict guidelines. Like they, you need to use their colors and those yeah. things and you still stick to the same, to the same headshot and you still stick to the same story. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, as long as you abide by the rules of your brokerage, I don't see a reason to, to, to change it up. No. You know? Um, but I mean, if you're with two different brokerages in the same state, I don't think you can do that. Well, yes, you can. Um, you know, then you might want to rethink that, but yeah, that's a definitely a good question. Um, so James, uh, yeah, I love everything you're showing us. Um, I feel like we really need to start thinking more about, you know, who we are, the type of people we want to work with, you know, where we come from, uh, what our hobbies are, you know, we want to relate. We're in a very relational uh, industry where people work with people they like and people they know and people they can relate to. So if you make yourself relatable, you bring yourself down on a more human level um, and you find your niche, you build your branding around that. I mean, you know, do you think I might go in somewhere with this? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Actually, awesome. A, I'm an expert now. I have a strategy for you guys. And this is, this is one of my big, like, so when I used to do a lot of workshops, I used yeah. to, oh, like, at the end of this training, I'm going to teach you guys how to add a hundred thousand dollars to your bottom. <laughs> your bottom <laughs> okay. So like at the comments below, Nick, you should say, James is going to talk about how to add a hundred thousand dollars to your GCI by the end of this year. And honestly, I still stand behind this. Like, cause I, I know the value. Cause this is something that the real estate agents and brokerages don't do. They just don't do it. They never do it. Even when I tell them to do it, they won't do it. Um, but if they did it, or if they hired us, we do it for them. It would change dramatically change the outcome of their business. And let me see if I, I, I think I have a slide for it just to build it up a little bit more guys. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Let me see. Um, so the question is, here we go. How do you add a hundred thousand dollars to your GCI in one year? Okay. Tell us. I'm going to do this little thing. Oh, right here. please. Okay. Have a marketing calendar. Oh. So having a marketing calendar is huge and no one thinks about it. You should know what you're doing three, six, nine, and 12 months from now. And it, every single big brand does this from Coca-Cola to BMW to Porsche to Apple. Every single person, if you were to ask them what they plan to do in June of 2019, they would tell you what they would tell you what they're posting on that day on social media, what they're emailing in their email newsletters, what they're um, going to print and mail out. They would know everything they're doing because they plan for it. And what we don't do because we're not in the game of marketing is think about this one piece, which is have a marketing calendar. So what I'm saying is you should know each month what you're going to do to market yourself and continue to brand yourself or build your brand. So let me see if I can, oh yeah, I don't have it. Okay, so I'm, I'm, and so if you start to plan out six months away from now, so if I go, all right, I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do for the rest of this year. So starting in April to December, I'm gonna have something going on every day. That plan, you should have, it should be broken down in an Excel sheet or a Google, a new Google calendar where you go, Monday, we're doing email newsletters. Tuesdays, we're going to post this on Facebook and Instagram. Wednesdays, we're prepping a, uh, we're going to, we're going to mail this piece. Thursdays, we're, uh, we're going to send um, a gift to all our, all our clients and their birthdays or for the month, whatever it is that you guys have, it should be calendared and planned. And then the biggest difference is you don't launch anything yet. Because you should be a month ahead of yourself. So if you're gonna, if you know you want to start in in April, you should then it's not gonna work. You gotta start in March. Sorry, in May, because you should be creating all the content in April for May. You should be prepped a month or two ahead, where you can publish it because it's already been created. 
in April for May. And then during May, while you're publishing or, or mailing or sending out email newsletters, you should be creating all the content for June. And so the goal is you're always, you're always creating content. Why do you create content? First of all, creating content is a leveraged way to communicate with people. That's what content and marketing is. It's telling people who you are instead of doing it one-on-one, -on -one, you're doing it through a channel that can reach more people at the same time. So it's pretty much leveraging yourself through marketing. And that's why marketing is so cool. It's because you can, you, you're almost like, it's like you're being there, like that video that I showed you guys at the beginning without being there. So the idea is create the, know what you're gonna do every single day in May, create all that content and marketing in April. While you're publishing everything, which is just clicking a button in May, you should be creating everything for June. And you should always have a plan and it should all be organized into one central campaign, which is your brand's promise. It should all, all come back after one year to your promise and your organizational purpose. And that, if you did that. So good. $1,000 to your GTI, I promise. So I love that idea because uh, you know, everything in your business should be planned out. You should have a business plan for, for your business anyway. And marketing is probably one of the mo is probably up there with one of the most important things you need to be focusing on. And, um, you know, just like, and, and if you're do if you're heavily, heavily on Facebook, you know, just schedule, schedule those posts out, you know, a month in advance or a week in advance, you know, or take a whole day or two and mastermind around what your marketing calendar is going to look like. So you're not at a loss. <clears throat> and then, you know, that can always be tweaked here and there depending on how things are going. But yeah, no, it's a great, great idea because it's something that will definitely put more money in your pocket and help you get leverage. So you're not kind of like scrambling every day to figure out what you're going to be um, putting out there into the, into the world, uh, you know, all the time. You, you just kind of have it right there. If it's in the calendar and exists, just like, just like your appointment schedule, your marketing calendar, if it's there, it exists. Hey, James, I got to jump off. I'm sure you do too, but I love this. This was awesome. Lots of great content. I'm going to watch it back later to get a, get pick up a few more nuggets. Um, but definitely check out maxadesigns.com. Uh, and you can also check out LCA Marketing Center, which we partnered with James on as well, which is real estate designs on steroids, lots of cool stuff. Um, and you can get seven days free as well. So James, thanks so much for being with us. Always a pleasure and always great to learn from you. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for having me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks, buddy. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.